What is going on guys, Andrew Acevedo here back with another video and we are back with some more Mets rumors on the offseason even though the lockout's going on. The Mets are the only team it seems like there's any news or any like rumors, anything coming out is the Mets even though it's the lockout, there's a lockout. Hopefully in the next month or two maybe we get that solidified, I doubt it, but maybe. So today's video. Three ways the Mets can trade Jeff McNeil this offseason from the report from Pat Rendazzo saying, hey, the Mets, once the lockout hits, they're going to shop McNeil. Let's talk McNeil first. Why is he getting shopped? I've seen a lot of people be like, hey, if McNeil's so valuable, why don't we keep him? The problem is, if, you saw, if you've seen what Billy Eplard has done so far this year, he's been able to just get rid of all the cancers. I don't say cancers, but all like the locker room issues. The Strowmans, the Baezes, those guys are gone. Guys like Conforto and then and McNeil, if he is moved, this is more of a team-shaking move because we've ran back with the same core every year for the last four years, and what have they done together? Little to nothing. Their best they did as an overall team was an 86-win season in 2019. That's the best that this core has done. McNeil is a solid, he's still a good ball player. He is still probably a top 15 second baseman. That's not that's the, not without a doubt. But the Mets have already brought in Eduardo Escobar. Kind of, if he, if he is moved, can fulfill that role of Jeff McNeil as kind of being that utility second baseman can play everywhere. That's what Eddie, Eddie Escobar is here. I do think the Mets are going to go out and get a third baseman. Eddie Escobar was the McNeil replacement. Who, you know, who, you look at, again, obviously, you look at his career in 2019 was his best year, the all star year, 144 WRC, plus, 23 homers, 75 RBIs, 318 batting average, 531 slugging. And then that's, you know, he had a good rookie year in 63 games, a 136 WRC, plus, and then 2020 in the, in the 60 game season, a 131. And then this year, fell off the face of the earth, 93 WRC, plus. Obviously has the debacle with Lindor, and that's probably one of the main contributors, contributing factors to McNeil getting traded is the fact that he fought McNeil. And obviously, Lindor is going to be here. McNeil wasn't is not guaranteed anything. McNeil, Lindor is guaranteed to be here for 10 years. Let's break down potentially some of the options, what the Mets could do with Jeff McNeil. And obviously, as we're going to start with the report that Brindazzo said, is, hey, they want to train him for pitching. You look at some of the options, Sonny Gray. Chris Bassett, Frankie Montas, Sean Manaya, and obviously the big one is Luis Castillo. We'll talk about some of the other guys first. Sonny Gray, quality number four starter. Uh, you look at his, you know, look at his stats from last year. Um, look at last year's stats. You know, seven and nine record of four point one one ninety ERA and one hundred and thirty five innings pitch, one hundred and fifty five strikeouts. Look at his Savant page. He has a really good Savant page. Obviously, uh, exit exit velo in the eighty eighth percentile. His hard hit percentage is in the ninety first percentile. His barrel percentage in the ninety second percentile. But I can already see everybody saying, "Hey, he can't pitch in New York." That is a that is not correct. The Yankees forced him to pitch a different style of game. I think he's more of a sinker slider. They wanted him to throw more curve balls if I remember correctly he's not a curveball pitcher they changed the pitcher he is so I don't believe that narrative that um, Sonny Gray can't pitch in New York another guy Chris Bassett uh, again coming off a 2021 all-star season with the Oakland A's he's got one also Sonny Gray has two years of control uh, two years at I believe was 22 million dollars Two years at $22 million. I think the second year is an option. For the first year is $11 million, and then the next year is an option. Chris Bassett, one-year deal, $8.8 million deal. Last year, 12-14 and 14 record, a 3.51 ERA, 157 innings pitched, and a third innings pitched. Again, his Savon Page, decent little starter. Again, it looks pretty good. You know, maybe gets a little, you know, the barrel, you know, he gets whiffs, doesn't get a lot of whiffs, who cares? Uh, for his career, solid career, again, is a guy you can get for cheap, maybe. And I think the, the idea of, like, why I would not trade Jeff McNeil for Chris Bassett or Sean Manaya or Frankie Montes, we'll get to those two next. The idea in this situa situation is it's not just Chris Bassett, it is, obviously, we'll get to that. We'll get to the third base position, that's going to be the second thing we're going to talk about. So think of it as a pitcher of Oakland with Matt Chapman, and we'll get to him in a second once we get done with the pitchers. Next. It's just another again, again. Pretty much all the A starters are available, so pretty much you have to worry about them. Frankie Montas again last year, thirteen and nine record, three point three seven ERA, one hundred eighty seven innings pitched, two hundred and seven strikeouts and a WHIP of one point one eight. The Savant page isn't great. Also has two years of control this year, only making five point two million. So which that is very appealing to teams that are close to the luxury tax. But God knows what the luxury tax thresholds and all those are going to be. But he does have another year of arbitration after next season. So you have him for two years of control. It is maybe a guy to look out for as a cheaper option. 
Sean Manaya. One year, it's a rental. One year, 10.2 milli, a 11, 11 and 10 record last year, 3.91 ERA, 179 innings pitch. Baseball's font page is not great. Uh, 194 strikeouts, but. His value is he's left-handed. It is hard to find left-handed starters, and he's a guy who you could fit in this rotation to be a lefty. Obviously, Lucchese's hurt. Um, Peterson is going to come up. They're both coming off injuries. You don't trust them to come back healthy, or you don't know what they're going to come back when they're healthy. So, Manaya can just be a legit number four. Yes, could you sign, you take Kikuchi? Possibly. Maybe, you know, would you prefer to give $10 million to Kikuchi or Manaya? That's you. Or you can get him a Matt Chapman. Let's go to the big one. Obviously, it is Luis Castillo, and that's the most... That's what most Mets fans want to trade Luis, uh, trade Jeff Manilas for is Luis Castillo last year. Terrible win loss record, so you know he's a bad pitcher. Uh, 3.9 ADR and 187 and two thirds innings pitched. Not 192 strikeouts to whip 1.36 uh, 1. for his career. Career 3.72 ERA and 707 and a third innings pitched. 770 strikeouts. Savon Page was great, and it was kind of tail of two halves for Luis Castillo. He was really bad in the first half, and then once the All-Star game hit, the second half he was back to being Luis Castillo. Beautiful Bugs Bunny changeup, as they as they say. Great fastball velocity, and I think if you give Jeremy Hefner and Luis Castillo, he can fulfill that potential that we all know he has. And we've been saying hey, Luis Castillo has all the potential in the world. I think Jeremy Hefner can find that. And yes, is it going to cost a lot? It is going to cost a arm and a leg to acquire a guy like Luis Castillo, but it is worth it down the run to get a legit number three starter with Castillo after Scherzer and DeGrom. That is an X factor in this rotation to add a quality arm. So yes, is it going to cost a lot for Luis Castillo? 100%. But this is what Aces cost. And if the Mets are serious to winning a World Series, out of those five guys, they want to go out and get the best pitcher, and that is Luis Castillo. And that's a guy the Mets should look at from the pitching perspective. Let's move on. To our second way. Let's move on to option number two, and that potentially is trading him for a third baseman. I know, yes, Chris Bryant is new that now everybody's favorite to play third base, and I've kind of soured on the idea of, of a Chris Bryant because I think some of these guys are better. Maybe not all of them. I think three of them are. Maybe one isn't, but also it could bring it could bring a value of one of the starting pitchers down. And let's start with Eugenio Suarez. I think he's not a great player. I know he's a guy a lot of people don't like. Strikes out a lot. Last year, uh, hit 31 homers, 100, 199 batting average. WRC plus 85 war, point six again he's not a guy who strikes out a ton but he hits for power and yes i even said like in the past video the mets don't really have a power bat beside alonzo you know if his contract which he has three more years at 37 million dollars left on that deal can bring the value down of a luis castillo it would intrigue me a little bit again some more power obviously the team needs some more power bats in a lineup that provides nothing and i guess we have a lot of guys who get on base we don't really have a guy that's just going to swing for defenses besides pete Obviously, if you watched my last video, this guy, the next guy, I want on the Mets so bad. That's Josh Donaldson. Uh, yes, he's got two years left, three years left total If the with the team option. I, I broke the contract down all in the last video, but $58 million over the next three years for a 37-year-old. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bad deal, but he's still one of the better hitters in baseball. Hits a great baseball swap page. Always like high on exit velocity. Look at even last year in 135 games, 26 homers, 246 batting average. Uh... 475 slug, a WRC plus of 124, a war of 2.2. Again, guy is going to provide you solid enough defense at third base, which is better than J.D. Davis again. And I don't think, and one, you could attach either some prospects or you could attach a Taylor Rogers to a Josh Donaldson trade. Maybe, you obviously, you wouldn't trade Jeff McNeil for Josh Donaldson, but one, I just kind of wanted to talk about J.D. again because it would, be, it would still be a good fit. And maybe it's a bigger, grander prospect. Maybe you can get an Austin Martin Let's say or, or Jordan Blaznovich. If you added, a, if you had to add a McNeil, but you would get a Blaznovich or an Austin Martin plus a Taylor Rod, one of Ma Martin or Blaznovich plus uh, Rogers with the Josh Donaldson contract. Again, I don't think JD and a McNeil would not be a JD trade, but again, a guy you should at least think about for third base. Like we said with the Oakland A's pitchers. Matt Chapman, I, again, it seems that the Mets have been linked to him since last year, and again, could bring the value last year. 210 average, 27 homers, uh, 101 WRC plus, 3.4 war. His contract looking for the rest of the year. He's got two more years this year. He's going to make $9.5 million, and then he's arbitration three for next year, so you have two years of control. Three-time platinum glove, gold, uh, platinum, two-time platinum glove, three-time gold glove defender at third base. He's one of the best defensive, if not the best, the second best defensive third baseman in the game. To put him on a left side of the infield with Francisco Lindor. No balls are going to get through those. The cannons, like there would be, be one probably maybe the best defensive left side of the infield in baseball. 
I don't love Matt Chapman. You look at Steamer projections, 150 games, 27 homers, 220 average, a 107 WRC+. Plus. He's a flawed player. You know, Again, he can provide you some power. Doesn't hit for average. But again, who really cares? He gets on base at a uh, 316 clip, which isn't great. But again, great defense at 3.5 war. Again, projected for Steamer this year at 3.5. So he's a guy... Again, if you can add him to a Bassett or a Manaya or a Montas, and I get two for one for Jeff McNeil, that you know that's a little bit better than just trading Jeff McNeil just for a pitcher itself. If you could add a Matt Chapman, and maybe you add a Adam Kalarik, which is a lefty in their bullpen, the Mets could use that. It could be something to think about. And obviously, everybody's favorite, the best or second best third baseman in the game, Jose Ramirez, and. Would you want to dump a huge amount? One, not a, not just a huge amount of prospects, but what if you if you threw in Jeff McNeil for Jose Ramirez? Obviously, look at his contract. That two years, twenty six million dollars. The dude is making nothing. He's again one of the most offensive, best offensive production uh, third baseman in the game. Look at last year in one hundred and fifty two games, thirty six homers, a two sixty six average, a five thirty eight slug, a one thirty seven WRC plus, and a six win six war season. Switch hitting black again. You can reunite him with Lindor. You know those guys can pr- produce together. But again, the problem is, are you willing <laughs> to give him another, give Cleveland another huge ransom of prospects plus Jeff McNeil? It probably have to revolve around McNeil, JD, and then either a Vientos, a Mauricio. You know, it would be a huge package to get Jose Ramirez, but who's, Jose Ramirez is a difference maker. Again, he's a top two third baseman. You know, he's improved defensively, again, which is great because he used to be pretty bad defensively. He's definitely improved. But, again, it's a guy, it, it's the big flashy name. I think his teams are going to overpay for him. Same thing with a guy like Luis Castillo. I don't think the Mets are going to make those two types of trades because I think a team will offer the Reds a uh, Barrios type deal, which was two number top three prospects. Um, in the Blue Jay system with Austin Martin and Simone Woods Richardson, so I don't think the Mets are going to do that for a Castillo, and I just don't think after last season, which they dumped, you know, two top ten prospects in the Mets system, and obviously with Jimenez and Rosario, I don't think the Mets are going to do it with, um, again, the Cleveland, which again don't probably better prospects and a Jeff McNeil to Cleveland. So again, those are options at third base if the Mets want to improve third base, but including a Jeff McNeil trade. Now let's go to the third option. And last, the other option that team that probably fans don't want to hear because they don't like prospects is taking Jeff McNeil and trying to flip him for a few top prospects. And here's the deal. The Mets are going to have two first-round picks in the first round, the 11th and 12th or 11th and 13th, whatever it is. Again, two top 12 picks. The Mets are also getting two compensation picks for losing Conforto, most likely, and Syndergaard. So the Mets are going to replenish this farm via the draft. If the Mets can take a high-valued asset and accumulate more top prospects into this system. You guys want to, you know, you, we were all jealous last year the Padres making big blockbuster deals. The Dodgers always have top farm systems because they know when they trade their assets to get good value. Teams that could willingly need a second baseman or could use a left-handed bat as good as Jeff McNeil is, obviously the White Sox, they desperately could use a second baseman. Their second baseman is very like was bad. I don't even know who it is. I think it's like Lourdes Garcia, I think. You know, they could definitely upgrade from him. The Twins, I know they have Luis Arise, but potentially Jeff McNeil is a better player than him and maybe, you know, Again, contract wise, we'll talk. We'll talk strictly for prospect. I threw the Yankees in here. I know they have. I know that probably the Mets and Yankees are never going to make a trade. But Billy Epler has a great connection with Brian Cashman. The Yankees could use a player like Jeff McNeil. I know Mets fans don't want to see that, hear that, but the Mets could get some good pieces from the Yankees if they wanted to. The Boston Red Sox. I know they have Kike Hernandez. No, oh, Kike was center. Uh, Jose Iglesias was playing there, I think, and uh, Christian Arroyo. I don't quote me, I think, but like they had a kind of platoon at second base, and they could use another left-handed bat. You know, if they do lose Schwarber, you know, McNeil isn't the power hitter that Schwarber is, but they can use another top-flight left-handed bat in the Red Sox lineup. Again, the A's. I brought keep bringing them up. Same kind of teams, and a team that could definitely use a bat after losing Marcus Simeon at second base. What about the Toronto Blue Jays? Those are so. Those are just a couple of teams with a couple of top prospects that I have my eyes on, which I would love to ask for. From obviously from Chicago is Yolki Cespedes. I know the Mets probably don't want to deal with the Cespedes again, but again, he's an outfield prospect. Again, the Mets have des- you know fans have clamored the Mets outfield prospects are bad. Be- obviously, besides uh, you know they're trying to make Beatty and Viento some flexibility, but you know, obviously they traded PCA, they traded Jared Kelnick. They don't really have besides the Khalil Lee's like the highest rated outf- true outfielder. Obviously not Nick Plummer, but. Now, if you let's say you get Yolki Cespedes, he's going to be in like AAA, AA, AAA. So he's getting he's close. He's pretty close to the big league, maybe another year or two away. 
The Twins are the most interesting team, and like my dream trade, which I don't think that would happen because they just acquired him, is Austin Martin for Jeff McNeil. That is my perfect trade because I think Austin Martin and Jeff McNeil are very similar, obviously uh, right-handed to left-handed, but that is like the perfect trade for me, and I don't obviously they're not going to trade Austin Martin after just trading for Jordan Blazovich and not Jordan Blas uh, Jose Brios. The guy I would would last is for Jordan, uh, right-handed starting pitcher Jordan Blazovich, the number three prospect in the Twin system. Kids again has high two stuff. I don't think he's a true ace, but again, the Mets could you just continue to use? Like, I have like Allen's and Gins, where like they have they're building a lot of like quality that, but they are further away. Uh, I saw Blazovich pitch live in Double A. This kid's got a great arm. I would love to hit, see the Mets get their hands on this kid. Top three prospect in the Twin System. Again, McNeil can play with can play the outfield, can play third base. Can, who knows what they're gonna do with J, if JD's traded? If like let's say then a rise or McNeil can go play second, or Mc, I mean you could just strictly play second, can play the outfield for the Twins. Provides a left-handed bat with guys like uh, Garver, um, also in their line, Miguel Sano. So who else isn't the two? If JD is still there, so they're, they're, it would be a good fit in Minnesota. Here's what everybody's gonna get. The Mets is never gonna happen. It's the New York Yankees. And yes, the Mets and Yankees don't make trades. The Mets are pe the Mets and Yankees are petty. They don't want to help each other out. But if the Mets called the Yankees, if Brian, the app dog called Brian Cash and said, hey, you want to talk Jeff McNeil? Yes, they have DJ LeMahieu. Yes, they have Glaber Torres. They have Gio. But they need another, another bat like Jeff McNeil where a guy's just going to be pure contact guy. And you put Jeff McNeil in Yankee Stadium, like he's going to hit you 30 homers just because he can poke him. Because, again, the short portion right field, even though McNeil's best value is just putting the ball in play. But you put McNeil in a situation where he can – and he hits he hits well in Yankee Stadium. He's like every time the Mets play the Yankee, Yankee Stadium, he homers and has, like, great games. So he kind of fits in right there. You put him and DJ LeMahieu, now the Yankee starters provide, you know, a little more balance and you know, greater, better approaches when you put a guy like McNeil and you put a guy like DJ in a lineup. And, again, he can play the outfield. He can play – Second, he played third. Some guys I would love from the Yankees is Clark Schmidt. I know, I think he, I think he got some time. A uh, big sinker. I think the may face the Mets. I think it was. I think, I think it was either him or Ken, uh, King pitched really well against the Mets. And, and I think it was in the summer league. I think they did one of them pitched in a regular season game. Uh, Devi Garcia was one of their top pitching prospects. Kind of falling down the rank, but again, still has a good arm. And then Luis Medina, another guy. Three prospect pitching prospects. I want to replenish pitching and outfields. Most of the positions the Mets kind of need is more extra pitching, pitching prospects and extra outfield prospects. So the Yankees had a bunch, and you know Cashman's trying to, you know, he knows he's on the hot seat, so he knows to go acquire some great players, and McNeil can, could be a great fit for the Yankees. Moving on to Boston, which again, then again, Boston, after a surprising coming back to being the Boston Red Sox, could use uh, Jeff McNeil because, again, they have Bogarts, they have Bogarts, they have Devers, so they have the left side of the infield set. They have, uh, as of uh, Schwarber, still afraid, so Bobby Dahlbeck playing first. I don't remember. I think Jose Iglesias was playing for them. I think he's a free agent as well. Christian Arroyo, I don't know. But there's a way that, you may, hey, maybe they need a second baseman. Obviously, they have uh, JD, they have Verdugo, they have Kike. You put McNeil in this lineup for the Red Sox, it would be very, very nice. And uh, yes, I know I'm going to say a name that Red Sox fans aren't going to move, but Jaron Durant. Uh, he, he came up, didn't show showed a little bit, but not a lot. Kind of disappointed in his little limited playing time in the big leagues. Mets could use they had another pure center field, another top outfield prospect. McNeil can be expendable for the Red Sox. Can they, then if the Red Sox are trying to win a World Series, you have Kike playing center anyway. You know, is if you're trying to win a World Series, are you going to try to hope to develop the help the Jaron Durant, Jaron Durant develops, or get a MLB quality player and Jeff McNeil to play second base in a position of hole for the Red Sox? Another guy's Jay Groom. I think he's a left-handed pitcher for the Red Sox and the top prospect, their number eight prospect. Again, like I said, outfielder pitching. I, that's why I would love the Mets to flip McNeil for prospect wise. A's AJ Puck, a guy that again has seen some big league time. But it just hasn't developed and hasn't stayed in the big leagues. Their number four prospects also has a lot of dealt with a lot of injuries. Could be a great Aaron Loop replacement or, or a second lefty. Maybe you sign a you know a Deekman or you trade for Taylor Rogers and, and AJ Puck is your second lefty in your bullpen. That'd be pretty nasty. This kid's got hard fastball as a starter and a reliever. There could be some flexibility. And the last, the Blue Jays. Obviously, they're not moving Gabriel Marino. I know that everyone's gonna be who he's another shortstop, but Jordan Groshans would be a decent, you know, I could try to try to acquire Jordan Groshans. I know he kind of fell down the Blue Jays top prospect list, but it could be a guy you keep an eye on. Again, because like short can be third, and everyone's like, well, we got Beatty, we got Maurice, we got the same problem. Again, if you want to just replenish the farm to flip assets, again, it's a high trade value piece the Mets could get back for Jeff Bingo. So that's one of the options. Again, they're probably not gonna just trade him for prospects because the Mets are in a win now mode, but if good teams you know, if they have extra value. I would flip them for prospects because, again, 
you get a stack draft to replenish from the draft, and if you can use McNeil to acquire a top three prospect out of any one system, and maybe a lower end guy, maybe like a top 12 to top 15 guy, get two pieces, potentially you can keep building up the farm system to go out and make bigger trades, because yes, how good as, what's it called, uh, Luis Castillo is, or um, any of the pitcher prospects, that pitching uh, trade chips, Let's say down the line a better pitching prospect or pitching better pitching option becomes available. Now you would have more assets to go get a better quality pitcher than a Luis Castillo. Maybe a Shane Bieber. I know. <laughs> Shout out to Tony Metro. Uh, a Shane Bieber legit becomes available. Yes, it's in Cleveland, but again, I think you everyone would prefer a Shane Bieber than Luis Castillo. So if you trade McNeil for some extra prospects, it wouldn't be bad. So overall, what do I think the Mets are going to do? I think they're going to train him for pitching. I guess as much as I don't want them to do it, I think they're going to train him for a pitcher again. If it's Castillo, I would love it but i just think again if, if it was up to me i'd probably flip for some uh, try to get some top end prospects to just continue to replenish the farm to go back for bigger years to go big you know for bigger pieces down the line but leave in the comment section down below what do you guys think of the jeff mcneil trade rumors what would you do who is your top give me like your top three options of like either pitchers third basements anybody prospects whatever leave them all down in the comment section down below thank you guys for watching Make sure to drop a like check out mets weekly on thursday we have a big episode where we're doing the all-time one thousand dollar mets fantasy draft that's going to be linked in the description as well as the twitter for mets weekly follow all the other mets weekly guys those are all linked down below Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.